Hello and welcome to Old Ways Gardening and Prepping. My name is Teresa. I'd like to welcome you out into the woods. Well, not quite so much the woods, but this old girl's happy. You want to know why? I'll show you here in just a minute. Just found the mother load of wild, ripe, muscadines folks muscadines they are just loaded let's see if i can there come one here it is wild ripe muscadines oh i am happy time to get to picking y'all well, we have ended up with oh, about half of a grocery bag full. Yes, I have a few unripe ones in there because they're higher in pectin. So, I'll be bringing y'all back because I'm not making muscadine jelly. I'm going to be making old-fashioned muscadine jam. I'm going to try my best to save every seed in here from these wild muscadines. Alright, I'll see y'all later when it's time to make the jam. Okay, welcome back everyone. It's time to start on the muscadine jam. Now, what I'm aiming for is 11 cups. Of cut up muscadines and you want to deseed them or in other words take the seeds out of them look how beautiful that muscadine is and these are wild muscadines y'all that's even a m more blessing I haven't found wild muscadines in a while all right now let's adjust the camera and let's get busy because this is gonna take a while I have a tray with the paper towel in it to put my seeds in because I'm saving every one of these seeds. And I'm going to try to get some wild muscadine. Since I know that this is a fruiting muscadine, I definitely want to save the seeds from it. You want to try to save the insides of the muscadine as well. That seed's trying to be obstinate. You want to make sure that you cut your uh, your muscadine in half. Take the stem out because there'll be a piece of stem on the inside. And he's got plenty of seeds in it. And in the bowl it goes. Let's do one more. And you want to try not to cut your seeds because if you nick your seeds, they're not going to be good. They're averaging four seeds per muscadine. So just imagine how many seeds I'm going to end up with. want a good sharp paring knife. Like I said, a lot of people make jelly with them. No baby, I want some jam. I like substance, not sugar water. Every once in a while I'll make some jelly, but to me jelly is a waste. Because I'm not a hummingbird. Alright. I'm going to keep doing the rest of this bowl, and like I said, I'm saving the seeds so I can start wild muscadine plants, or muscadine vines. Let's get, let's get it right. I was hoping for enough for two batches of jam, but I think I'm going to get one. One batch of jam is more than I had before. So fixing to get busy and I'll bring you right back once I get them all done okay finally done with it and we looked up we had 
just enough to make the recipe. There is 11 cups of cut up in half or in quarters muscadine hole and the pulp inside. Now this is not a quick recipe. It takes time to make muscadine jam because I also saved every single seed. There, oh, there's hundreds and hundreds of wild muscadine seeds which I'm going to take care of once I'm done with making the jam. Now, like I said, in the stock pot is 11 cups. Uh, if the muscadines were small, I cut them in half. If they were large, we cut them into quarters. Like I said, it take, this is a labor of love, and it's worth it every bit. With these being wild muscadines, I didn't want sugar water. I wanted to enjoy them. Now, you're going to want a good size stock pot. This is going to be plenty big enough because um, I've got two cups of water in here. No more. Two cups of water. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to put this pot on the stove over here and I'm going to bring the pot up to a bowl cut it down watch them make sure they don't stick because it'll ruin your whole batch of jam and what we're going to do muscadine pulp the hull around a muscadine are tough especially wild ones but what I'm going to do is I'm going to bring it up to boil and then I'm going to drop it down to a simmer and let them simmer for 15 minutes and uh when they're done, I'm going to cut the flame off, I'm going to let it cool down, and then I'll bring you right back. Muscadine jam, y'all. Okay, they have cooked for 15 minutes, and it has actually gelled nicely, but that's not what I'm after at the moment. Alright, I'm going to cut my flame off, and I have to now let this cool down before I can put my pectin in here. Now, for those that have texture issues, once it cools down, you can blend it. I would pulse it in a, a food processor. But, you know, I'm old-fashioned. I like my jam chunky. I like to know what I'm eating. So, I'm not going to be doing that with mine. But now, I'm going to let this cool down. I got my water back canner going, because we will be water back canning it when we're done. This is step one of making, well, step two of making the jam. Cleaning them, getting the seeds out, cutting them in half, cutting them in quarters was part one. Part two is cooking the pulp, the holes actually, until they're good and soft. And now we wait. I'm going to get my jars hot and clean. Well, they're already clean. Get them sanitized and I'll bring you back when it's time to start making the muscadine jam official. Okay, the muscadines are finally cooled down enough to start making the jam now. Now, I will say I don't have the recipe for sugar-free, but that is already gelled really nice. Now, of course, muscadines naturally have some sugar in it, so do a little research. You might can go on and jar that up without doing, having to do too much more. But do your research because I'm sorry everyone. I don't know the sugar-free recipe version of it. So let's talk about the supplies I'm going to be using now. 
I have the mustard dunes cooled on the stove top. They're not perfectly cooled, but they are room temperature. They'll be fine. You're going to need one pouch of sure gel or one pouch of powdered pectin. You're going to need seven cups of sugar. Now, let me tell you, the musty dimes were kind of sweet, but they definitely wasn't sweet. But for this recipe, it's seven cups. You're going to need, now, it usually does about a dozen jars, but I always have extra jars ready to go just in case. It's better to have more than not enough. And they have been heated and they're hot. I have my lids, which don't have to be heated. I have my bands over here out of the way. I have a canning funnel. I have a ladle. Ooh, and I have an evil chopstick for a debubbler. I have my jar lifter. I also have some apple cider vinegar, or you can use regular white vinegar and a paper towel to um, wipe the rims off because you definitely want to make sure that there's no sugar stuff, any of the syrup, on your um, jar lids. And coffee, coffee, yes, to have patience with these people around me. All right, it's time to head back over to the stove and let's get to making some jam, y'all. Okay, first off, I'm going to apologize for any noise behind me because, yeah, this is real time cannon. I can't help these people and the noise they make. And that's one package of powdered pectin. Definitely want to make sure it stirs in very well. And then we'll cut the flame on. And you want it on medium to medium high. And you're going to want a good sturdy stirring spoon. I'm going to bring this up to a bowl and give it a minute and I'll bring you right back. Okay, it's at a full bowl and we're going to boil it for one minute. Stirring so nothing sticks or burns to the bottom. It's gelling pretty good. sugar in. All seven cups. You want to stir that in really good. Make sure there's no lumps. That everything gets dissolved. Mm 
and you want to make sure you stir it so it does not stick on the bottom. Make sure you get everything knocked down off the sides. Oh, I wish y'all could smell this. Absolutely. Oh, muscadine heaven. Look at that, how pretty that is. Now we're going to stir it and let it come up to a rolling boil. You want to make sure you have a big enough stock pot to make it in. Look at that, just absolute beauty in a pot. And I wanted to make sure, since those, these are wild muscadines, that I made something really special with them. Because around here you can get regular muscadines, but actually finding and getting to harvest wild ones, yeah, I want something special. And most people don't make the muscadine jam anymore because they don't want to go to all the trouble, as they call it. In other words, they don't want to do the work for it. Let me tell you, this is amazing on some hot, fresh buttered biscuits. Spread on. English muffin, some toast, pancakes, it's going to be heaven in a jar. drink of coffee. But you definitely want a good strong spoon. Because it's good and thick. I know a lot of people are not wild about the pulp of muscadines, but that's where a lot of your flavor is. Look at that beautiful, beautiful color. Oh, and the aroma, oh my gracious, it's just absolutely amazing. I'm 
we both laugh because we got exactly, we were blessed with the harvest, exactly the amount of muscadines to the tea to make one batch. Alright, now, since it's come to a full rolling ball, you're going to time it for a minute. And don't let it splatter you, because it will get you. That's why I like long, long spoons. Now, if you want to, you can skim the foam. I don't skim the foam. And if you want to, you could also put in, what is it, a tablespoon or two of butter that'll help with the foam. The foam don't bother me. I look at it as part of the the jam. Alright, I'm going to move y'all and move the pot. And we're going to go and can these up. Okay, I had to move some things around. Right. Take the first jar. Put your your uh, canning funnel in it. You want to pour it in slowly. And you're going for a quarter inch head space. I'm going to wring out your vinegar towel because you don't want vinegar getting into your jam. You want it just moist enough wipe wipe your band your rim clean And just finger tight. You want to make sure that the water in your water bath canner is boiling.
And another thing you want to make sure that none of this syrup gets on you. Because it will burn you. Make sure you get any bubbles out. And be very careful because your jar will be hot. I'm going to tell you, this is happiness in a jar. Wild muscadines are so hard to find anymore. No, 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 no. Come back here. This is what happens when you work with tight spaces. Sorry y'all, I got to, you get into like a trance while you're doing it. I'm going to keep filling them up and once I get it all uh, in jars, I'll bring you right back. Alrighty, I ended up with 14 
Yes, 14 a uh, full jelly jar. And this is for us to celebrate. Two thirds of a jelly jar. Alright, time to walk it over here and put it into the water bath canner. Okay, I had my flame off on my water bath canner. It was fully boiling. I don't like to put my jars down into full rolling boil water. So, here we go. And the water is two inches at least above my jars and that's exactly what you want now once that comes up to boil you're going to a rolling boil you're going to time it for 10 minutes and I'll bring you back when they come out see you after a while all right it's been 10 minutes time to cut it off Now I'm going to let it sit for five minutes and, and then I'll bring them out and bring you back. Alright, it's been five minutes. Time to get them out of the canner. Fourteen beautiful jelly jars full of muscadine jam. You want to make sure you give them plenty of room. Cool off. You don't want them touching. Oh, beautiful sound. And of course you want to let them cool for 24 hours undisturbed and then you'll check for seals which I can see just about all my seals have sealed and after 24 hours you're going to give them a good bath then you're going to label them and put that blessing in the pantry. I am so thankful for this blessing. 
Oh, guess what? I just happen to have some saltine crackers right here. Let me get me a cracker and try some of this. This is why I'm always thankful when there's a jar left that's not completely filled. And it's still hot, but look at that, it's gelling beautifully. And of course, as it cools, it's going to gel even more. Mmm. Mmm. Absolutely amazing. Uh-oh. I'm getting a sad puppy face over here. <laughs> Junior. <clears throat> giving me the sad puppy face. It has that wonderful... If you've ever had muscadines, that wonderful muscadine twang... And it's mm. not overly sweet. What? Mm. Oh, I got a lurk. Mm. No, young Frankenstein, the Frankenstein monster. <laughs> Simple, easy, <clears throat> and absolutely delicious. And one massive blessing to have been able to find wild muscadines. And have the exact amount that I needed to make this batch of jam. I hope this encourages you as well to make your own muscadine jam. If you can't find the wild ones, the tame ones will work as well. You can get scuppernogs, you can use muscadines. It's all delicious. And something wonderful to have back put back in your pantry. And like I said, I prefer jams and preserves over jelly. Every once in a while I make some jelly, but it's only because that's what I make jelly out of that. Simple, easy, homemade, wild foraged, wild muscadine jam. Everyone take care. I hope you've enjoyed this video. If you have any questions, please feel free to ask them in the comment section below. I look forward to seeing you in my next video. Stay safe, stay sound, stay wise, keep your eyes and your ears open. Continue to stock your pantries with as much as you can. I look forward to seeing you in my next video, and may you each be blessed. Y'all take care.